my second example uh, involves trying to understand 3d rotations by reducing them to the study of a 2d rotation in other words i would like to derive the formula that we have loved in two dimensions which has worked in two dimensions for us from the consideration of 3d rotations that we have just learned after all 2d is a subset of 3d so whatever we have learned for 3d should work in 2d so here is a problem which will help us do that so here is the problem statement it states that we have a rigid body let's call it b whose motion is being observed by an observer whose coordinate system is capital e0 the observer may himself be moving or herself be moving because of which the unit vectors of capital e0 capital ei are functions of time and this observer is observing the rigid body b that means he is observing the body fixed coordinate system of the rigid body b the body fixed coordinate system is given by the blue e and its unit vectors are also changing with time because the rigid body itself is also moving and what the observer finds is that the rotation tensor which relates the bscs of the rigid body to the bfcs of the observer this rotation tensor is of a special kind the rotation tensor can always be represented as a rotation by an amount phi about the e3 axis of the observer okay and we are required to find the angular velocity of the body b with respect to e0 okay so let's kind of draw some pictures to make sure we understand the problem so we have a rigid body okay that's a typical picture of a rigid body and to the rigid body we have attached a bfcs here's the bfcs and it is changing with time so e1 is a function of time e2 is a function of time and e3 is a function of time this is body b and this is origin at g this is being observed by a fixed or not a fixed by an observer whose own coordinate system the observer coordinate system the body fixed coordinate system of the observer all different ways of saying the same thing is given by capital e1 capital e2 and capital e3 which as i said could also be changing because the observer himself or herself is also changing moving with time so what we have here is a cartesian coordinate system here is another cartesian coordinate system so we know that the cartesian coordinate systems can be related by a rotation tensor r so far everything is general what makes this example special is that this rotation tensor turns out to just be a rotation about capital e3 by an amount phi right and that's what makes this entire thing special is this rotation being simply a rotation about e3 okay and as you will see this will turn the problem from 3d to more or less a 2d problem so let's go okay let's go ahead and solve this our strategy will be that uh, we will compute the angular velocity tensor which is given by the formula r dot dot r transpose using the r that we have over here and from there we will be then be able to calculate omega as the axial vector of omega so that's our strategy okay so well here it is the angular velocity tensor is given by this formula which i have written over here already okay and of course all computations have to be done in one coordinate system or another so we are going to use so we evaluate okay or compute in the coordinate system e0 we could do it in e also it doesn't matter because both these coordinate systems are related by r the calculations are almost exactly the same okay so uh, what we have so therefore we will evaluate this formula in e0 so we will have omega in e0 is r dot in e0 multiplying r in e0 transpose of that 
okay so the first step is to calculate r okay that is easy because as i have already mentioned r is a rotation about the observer's e3 frame therefore with respect to the observer this rotation tensor is a planar rotation right so we can write that so r is a planar rotation okay 2d rotation with respect to e0 if we had chosen some other coordinate system which was not as nice as e0 then in this coordinate system let's call it e prime this rotation would not be a 2d rotation okay all right so therefore now that r is a rotation about e3 phi by amount phi so if we evaluate its matrix in e0 it will be this very nice 2d kind of matrix 2d rotation matrix that we know and love okay so there we go so that's our answer for r okay so so far so good okay and uh, i'll just remind you that this phi is a function of time okay so i'll just put the time down here okay so now what we need to do is compute this and this is not as simple as one may initially think it to be we now have to compute the tensor r dot when doing so we must realize that r dot is the time derivative of the rotation tensor r with respect to e0 and e0 itself is moving okay therefore this time derivative is a relative time derivative right in other words the rotation tensor that you see over here okay the time rate of this rotation tensor with respect to an observer e0 would be different if i had computed the time derivative with respect to a fixed coordinate system let's say e prime if this coordinate system was fixed then the time derivative of r would be different than the time derivative of r with respect to this moving observer okay so we must realize this we will come back to this in far greater detail in the next week's lecture when we start doing uh, relative velocities and relative accelerations right now we just need to note this fact okay so now we return to computing r dot okay so let's first notice that we are after the matrix of r dot in e0 and the question is is this equal to the time derivative of the matrix of r in e0 because we already have the matrix of r in e0 the answer is no not in general okay this is not true in general okay in fact we can write down that the matrix of the time derivative of a tensor is generally not equal to the time derivative of the matrix in general okay there can be particular cases when they are equal okay right so what should we do how should we compute this quantity this is when this remark comes to our help i will show you at a later in a later lecture most probably that this equality this equation becomes an equality provided the time derivative that we have is with respect to e0 which is what we have therefore in our case 
बिकॉज टाइम डेरेवेटिव इज विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ई जीरो वी कैन शो दैट आर डॉट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ई जीरो विच इज अ मूविंग फ्रेम इज इक्वल टू डी बाई डी टी ऑफ आर इन ई जीरो वी कैन शो दैट ओके एंड इट हैपन्स ओनली बिकॉज द टाइम डेरेवेटिव विद रिस्पेक्ट टू ई जीरो दिस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट विच आई विल कम बैक टू राइट नाउ वी डोंट we i mean let's not discuss this right now okay but now that we have this equality now that we have this to be true okay that's a bad move okay we can simply go ahead take this tensor let's copy let's take this matrix let's copy it and we can compute R dot in E zero as simply d by d t of R in E zero, which you can go ahead and simply differentiate this matrix. You will get phi dot outside, and inside you will get minus sine phi, minus cosine phi, cosine phi, minus sine phi, zero 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 zero. okay so that's r dot and now i need to and then i can go ahead and multiply r dot and r transpose right that's what i was after i want to get omega in e0 which will be r dot in e0 and r in e0 transpose so i need to multiply these two matrices and when you do that you will find that this will turn out to be phi dot 0 minus 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 okay that's what i have here i have just written down r and r dot and there is an error here that should be 0 and omega is what you get over here we have already proved that omega must be a skew symmetric tensor therefore this matrix is skew symmetric so we have now found the angular velocity tensor in e0 with respect to the observer the angular velocity vector of the body b measured with respect to the observer e0 is simply then the axial vector of this tensor which is clearly phi dot capital e3 and because capital e3 is aligned with small e3 we can actually write this to be that phi dot of small e3 so we have solved the problem we have found the angular velocity of the rigid body as observed by the moving observer e0 okay and there were it's a very subtle example okay meanwhile this equation should remind you of 2d the angular velocity is phi dot e3 that's how we did in 2d this is a 2d rotation it's a 2d rotation because a 2d motion 2d rotational motion because the rotation happens about the observer's prince unit uh, principal axis or rather the unit vector of the observer's frame this is just echoing the remark i made earlier the angular velocity of this body that we have just computed is the angular velocity measured by the observer it is not the total angular velocity it is not the angular velocity with respect to a non rotating coordinate frame okay this is a relative angular velocity please keep that in mind not keeping this in mind can used can lead to a lot of confusion we move on to the next example <coughs> 